Hello, I'm Anthony Watts, Senior Fellow for Environment and Climate for the Heartland Institute. The liberal media may tell you otherwise, but no one should assume the science is settled regarding anthropogenic climate change. There's simply no consensus. But what about the economics behind climate change? Economists have been addressing environmental issues since the discipline was founded back in the 18th century. Economies and ecological systems have many commonalities, leading to many shared concepts between economics and ecology. Just like the fallacy of climate consensus, economists have a larger role in environmentalism than the media would like to admit. And like the supposed consensus, no one should assume that the only role for economists is to recommend the most efficient way to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. There are very few key concepts you must know to fully understand environmental economics. The first is called opportunity cost. So what does that mean? Well, basically, an opportunity cost is the value of foregone uses of the funds and time spent in a decision. If the city of Chicago, for example, spends $50,000 on an electric vehicle charging station, there's an associated opportunity cost. Would those funds be better used in other ways, perhaps maybe filling potholes? I'm sure many people who have lost tires due to potholes would think so. Second, you must understand that climate change debate is not about a conflict between people who are selfish and those who are altruistic. People who oppose the immediate action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions are just as ethical or moral as those who support such actions. Finally, imposing legislation on the masses creates opportunities for something called moral hazards. Now, a moral hazard occurs when people are able to escape full responsibility for their actions. For example, if wealthy Green New Deal advocates could mandate 100% renewable energy tomorrow, they'd be able to afford the rising cost of living. Those with less money probably could not afford that sort of a change and may have to leave America. This is the moral hazard. As radical politicians and celebrities are completely sheltered from the dangers of their own ideas. Private environmental protection, allowing environmental economics to operate in a free market system, will lead to better environmental outcomes than government imposed actions. The art of economics consists not merely of looking at the immediate effects, but rather the long term effects of any act or policy. Legislators often focus on what effect their laws will have today, while property owners care about the long-term effects any action might have on their property. The information needed to anticipate environmental changes and decide how best to respond is local knowledge, and most efficient responses will be local solutions. Many environmentalists frame the climate change debate as a choice between prosperity and environmental protection. This is a false choice. Environmental economics is not a zero-sum game. More prosperity leads to environmental protection becoming a higher social value and provides resources needed to make it possible. Private ownership of land leads to better environmental outcomes than federally managed lands. The information needed to anticipate changes and decide how best to respond is local knowledge, and the most efficient responses will be local solutions property owners are less likely to face moral hazards as they have no ability to impose rules on the masses. So what role do governments have in environmental protection? Well, governments can protect the environment by defining and enforcing property rights. It's clear that private property owners are better equipped to protect the environment than the federal government. After all, they're right there where the land is, right? And enforcing people's property rights ensures owners have control over their own land. The reason government should leave environmental protection up to the property owners is because federal regulations often fail to achieve their desired outcomes. Politicians' incentives often differ from those of the citizens due to pressure from lobbyists, special interest groups, partisan politics. Most importantly, politicians often lack reliable local knowledge. The key to understanding the failures of government is an understanding of incentives. What's the incentive here? Is it to protect the environment? Well, maybe. But the main incentive is to be re-elected. To do this, politicians will impose rules desired by their constituents. However, 
voters have little incentive to become knowledgeable about the many public policy issues. Economists call this rational ignorance. Thus, voters may think it's virtuous to call for overbearing environmental regulations, but that's simply not the case. Politicians will still vote for these ill-advised regulations to please their voters for political reasons. Allowing environmental economics to operate in a free market will also benefit future generations. Capital markets create information, signals, and incentives to manage assets for long-term value. Markets also reward innovations that protect the environment. Any innovation that uses less energy and raw materials per unit of output benefits the consumers, the producers, and the environment. Finally, mistakes made in markets tend to be small and self-correcting, while government mistakes tend to be big and far long-lasting. They can have catastrophic effects. In conclusion, simply put, climate change is not a problem government needs to solve. It is a complex phenomena involving choices made by billions of people producing countless externalities, both positive and negative. The best responses to climate change are likely to arise from voluntary cooperation mediated by non-governmental entities using knowledge of local cost and local opportunities. Promoting energy freedom, allowing markets rather than governments to make important choices about which fuels to use, can turn climatic change from a possible tragedy of the commons into an opportunity for the masses. I'm Anthony Watts, Senior Fellow for the Heartland Institute for Environment and Climate. Thank you for watching.